The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Having a few technical difficulties this morning. Might be a little blurry. My connection, a little bit struggling. But we'll get through it. We markets, markets are not struggling, folks. They are trading higher. We have the S&P right now up 42 points, trading at 45.54. You get the NASDAQ with everything we have going on. You get the Dow right now up and 50 points. Hopefully we catch up. Come on. Come on. Russell up 18 points as well. My producer, if you can let me know if you can at least hear me. I see things kind of resetting. There we go. Okay, we got markets back. S&P's up 43, 45, 55. Quite the acceleration, folks. You look at where we were just last Friday. You're talking about 100 and 17. And check out the action just in the last 24 hours of trading, folks, 100 S&P points almost. Remarkable acceleration. This coming into CPI data tomorrow morning. We'll jump over to the headline to kick things off. Hot inflation data risk pushing Fed closer to a super sized hike. That sums it up well. Greater than expected CPI could pressure a 50 basis point move. Uh, you heard my dad's update from last night playing as we came into this morning and he was talking about you know you get a number we're supposed to see seven percent i believe the number is core number uh two percent there's what they're looking for that would be the largest since 1982 when you check out that acceleration folks uh when you talk about the core number which is in pink here quite an acceleration that we haven't seen some time check it out you're going back to 1991 even close to that level and we didn't you know we're above that level now and you had to get back to 1980 early 80s inflation every time we've had a spike prior to that i mean look where we were in 2008 core number was not there in 2008 uh you, you saw Intubation from higher prices to lower prices. You saw some volatility again in 2011 when we had the CPI rising at 3.5. But even then, the whole conversation, right, was the core number was sitting at 2.1. I think we have a peak there, about 2.3. We got up to um, even when you had numbers of the CPI rising at 3.9 percent in September of 2011. You had the core number at 2 percent. The Fed had a lot more cover there. Maybe rightfully so, whether you agree or not. I mean, the whole conversation, I remember it back then, saying, how do you take food and energy out of the equation? We all need food and energy to live. Shouldn't they be in the consumer price index that gauges inflation? Uh, now that argument doesn't even matter because you're going to have the headline number at 7.2%. You're going to have the core number flirting with a number of 5.9%. We get that number in 24 hours, and the market don't care. It's trading higher, folks. It's trading higher in pretty dramatic fashion. You're up uh, almost a full percent in the S&P. You're up 1.3% in the NASDAQ. Apple shares, you're going to open up a buck fifty to the upside, 176.29 there for Apple. Uh, I was just reading in the den, our man Dave White was talking about uh, Apple March 8th. They'll be out with some new products. Whether that will matter to their bottom line, we will find out. But nonetheless, Apple trading higher today. I think you got all the tech stocks, I'm sure, with the NASDAQ 100 up almost 190 points. Check out the move in Microsoft. You're talking about $4 to the upside. We jump over to Amazon. Amazon trading up a solid $30. Uh, remarkable. The strength in Amazon continues. We jump over to Tesla shares right now. Getting a little bit of a boost by about 17 bucks. I mean, no matter where you go in this market right now, folks. Let's jump over to Chipotle. They had their earnings last night. We'll take a look at this a little bit later in the pro program. Strong numbers, though, man. You're trading up over $100 on Chipotle. You're going to open at about fifteen sixty-eight. dollars uh, You also had Lyft earnings last night. A little bit of a disappointment, but look how they've clawed it back. Actually, it'll be higher. Uh, Lyft trades down to $38 from a close of about $41. Right now, we're trading uh, higher on Lyft at $41.40. After the bell tonight, we get Uber. Uber 
pretty similar action to Lyft. Trades lower on Lyft numbers. Uh, Lyft, I believe they beat on revenue. We'll pull up the numbers later, but I believe they beat on revenue, but missed for the users. Don't want to be missing on the users. But nonetheless, with the market, you got Uber trading higher as well, and we get Disney earnings after the bell. Disney trading up about a buck fifty right now to one forty four. Just been shopping around for a bit. We take a look at Disney. Let's back it up on a three year weekly to get the full context of the move here. You trade from $79 and change in the COVID lows to 203. You back down almost to the 618 exactly. The 618, 126.42. Disney just makes it within $3 of that price level, 129.26. That was the low a couple weeks ago on the Monday. Uh, we're going to back it up a little bit further. We'll go about 20 day hourly. Uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago, Monday, when the market was kind of exacerbating itself to lows. Disney popping a bit, 144, but they're going to have a lot to answer for. If you remember, Netflix shares really cratering on their last earnings. There it is. Netflix comes out with their numbers January 20th after the bell. They miss in big fashion. You trade from 509. Within a couple of days, you're trading down at 350. Netflix probably getting a little ahead of itself, up to 462. This morning, you're trading at 408. Uh, lots of conversation about Facebook recently, maybe rightfully so. Facebook dealing with some pretty remarkable multiples, folks. Where this thing settles, it's going to be interesting. Uh, always interesting when you have the conversation persisting beyond professional traders. Just even my friends, um, successful individuals, they're in different fields in, in life. But they all are interested in at least managing some portion of their retirement portfolio, trading portfolio, et cetera. The conversation about Facebook is taking place, folks. Um, you got people talking about where am I going to have to dollar cost average down? People getting caught a little bit. <laughs> you know, understandable, man. You got Facebook. Everybody is caught in Facebook right now, folks, since basically – July of 2020, you could own, no, even worse, right? You're talking about since May of 2020, you were trading at 237. Uh, you make the argument that you're caught from January of 2020, pre-pandemic levels, below pre-pandemic levels, you could be caught. You basically had to buy the dip during the cascade to lower prices during the pandemic when it began in March of 2020, February of 2020. Uh, you get the point. Now, we are dealing with some pretty amazing multiples on Facebook right now. I'll give you a couple tidbits of information. One thing, they made $40 billion last year, all right? Uh, that money, though, is useless if Zuckerberg takes all the profits from the profit engines of the company and uses it to support the failing metaverse. Just giving you how this thing is getting priced because at $40 billion of profit a year, the company yesterday snuck below, I believe, uh, 100 and, uh, excuse me, $600 billion market cap. What are they sitting at right now? 609. So they're just above that number. To walk you through how tough it is to regulate and to draft legislation to regulate these tech companies, part of the uh, legislation that is moving through Congress to target the so-called gatekeepers, right, the tech giants that we need to monitor um, and, and regulate would be a better term, that we need to regulate for privacy, for monopolistic tendencies. One of the caveats is regulating companies valued at greater than $600 billion. Facebook, of all companies, almost going to sneak under that. Now, they might qualify because of some of the other accolades. They reach 2.8 billion people on a monthly basis. Um, but their earnings, one of the biggest factors there was they lost users on a daily active level for the first time ever. They went from, I think it was $1.93 billion to $1.929 billion. They lost 500,000 people on a daily basis, and they're dealing with $1.93 billion. Small number, but decreasing numbers. Uh, we'll see. But interesting action Facebook. Up about 3 bucks to start it off. Stay tuned. We'll come back with our man Kevin Hanks, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P 2 points right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, talking about the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trades, talking about options, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, uh, a little bit of a quiet before the storm in terms of economic data, but certainly a Good start to the morning here, but I would expect the two-way trade that we've had in this market to continue, Tommy. Remarkable, Kevin. When I talked to you yesterday, uh, one of the members and many members in our Tigers then, right, saying, all right, maybe, maybe even coming into Tuesday, we, we kind of calm things down a bit and wait for the CPI data on Thursday morning. Uh, two days is a lot of trading to calm things down, but you could make that case. And here we are, Kevin, almost 100 S&P points higher from when we chatted just early yesterday morning. Pretty remarkable, the surge. Uh, I wake up this morning and I said, man, these markets relentless to the upside right now with an overnight bid of basically 1% NASDAQ 100 up 1.3%. Some strong numbers for the tech companies in terms of Apple trading higher, Microsoft, Amazon. What do you think as we come into that CPI number, the market's just pushing higher right into it? You know, Tommy, I think we've got some Fed speakers. Rafael Bostic came out today with some comments talking closer to three rate hikes. Uh, that was probably something that calmed some markets. We've also got Loretta Messer is going to speak the, you know, this morning. I think yesterday, Tommy, there was a note auction, a three-year note auction that came in incredibly strong. Why? Because of foreign buyers, not U.S. buyers foreign buyers taking up the lion's share of the buying in, in a note auction. So I think rates are positive because of that. I mean, y yields are a little bit lower, but I think it's all going to be about tomorrow's number. Now, remember, the headline number is what the news organizations are going to beat you over the head with, right? The year-over-year -year number. But that monthly number, looking for 0.5 on the headline, 0.5 on the core, 0.5 in the quarter will be down a tenth from a month ago. Remember, it was two weeks ago, two Fridays ago, the income and outlays number came in calm, and the market liked it. Last week's number came in a little hot in terms of wages, and the market still was able to go up, even with higher rates. 
So you may see you may be seeing a market that was uncomfortable with higher rates starting to get less uncomfortable, Tommy. And that's why I think you're seeing, you know, sell offs, midday sell offs being bought and rallies coming off that. So we're at a pretty interesting place here in this in, in, in this trading world. Yeah, it's remarkable, man. Interesting. Uh, I love the word interesting, right? It can mean a lot of things, man. And interesting, it, that is definitely where we are. Tomorrow is going to be an interesting number, man. I was looking at the, the chart on a core basis, Kevin. Even when we've had some spikes for the CPI, you go back to 2008 or 2011. The core number, though, um, you deal with the hard number, man, in terms of really exacerbating things. Month over month, though, you make some great points, man, because we know it's going to be a hot number. Um, that's to say the least. We'll see where we go. But pretty interesting. Interesting that the conversation now seems to be whether we're getting one or two hikes come March. And boy, things change so quickly compared to where we were even talking about March for the beginning of the hiking cycle. Uh, we got some earnings, man. We had some earnings yesterday. We got some earnings and some big companies coming up today. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at noon Eastern time, Kevin? Three more good names today to talk about, Tommy. Uh, Disney in the A block. And then like Foley will do a presentation after talking about Lyft. Uh, yesterday, they'll talk about Uber today, and then the uh, nice. the interesting name because it's a it it sounds like it's a a um, soft drink company went in PepsiCo, but it's really a salty snack company if you think about it. So Disney, Uber, and PepsiCo today, Tommy. Now, were you in the Pepsi market maker pick, Kevin? Is that where you were? Uh, yeah. I was the full disclosure. Now, I was a specialist. I traded Pepsi for from basically 1986 to 2006. That's some experience, folks. That's why you got to check out Fast Market at 12. I, I tell you, Kevin, I was talking to one of the employees, Jacob, at TFNN yesterday, and I was talking about, you know, I was telling him, man. Implied volatility, right? I was showing them implied volatility. I'm teaching them about, you know, the moves that are expected, right? And I was talking about yesterday, the, the giant moves in companies like Chipotle, for instance, like Lyft, talking about 15% almost the move for their earnings. And I brought up the example, Kevin, are you talking about Pepsi and saying, you know, normally, because Pepsi, it was cool that they had their earnings, right? Normally, uh, if you listen to Kevin Hanks, he's talked about it, folks, and it doesn't happen all the time. But Kevin, maybe you can elaborate because I was saying... Pepsi, not as often, and tell me if I'm right, not as often the volatility, so you don't see that big of a volatility that it doesn't move sometimes on the earnings. Can you talk about that? Because I was just talking about it yesterday, man. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, Pepsi in its history, and you only get a history like this from trading it month in, month out, quarter in, quarter out, is not a big mover off of earnings. It's just, right, now look at the expected market maker move for Pepsi is about 2%. Now, that's historically yeah. at the low end of the range. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't move, but historically it doesn't move on earnings or it has very mild, muted moves because they, you know, they're a big consumer staple company. I don't know if they're consumer discretionary or not. Let's see. Officially, they're, no, they, yeah, they're a consumer staple and they should be. Uh, and those, they, they just don't get the big volatile swings off of some of their earnings reports. And so knowing that, you can, that can affect the strategy that you put on. If you're expecting a range-bound trade, you can trade or prepare or put on a strategy for a range-bound trade, Tommy. Listen, you guys do such a great job, man. Experience, you know, we all know experience is just crucial to anything in life, man. You guys got some great experience between yourself, Tom White, the whole team over there. Um, and the point I was making, Kevin, right, is I was talking about maybe selling, you know, we're all familiar, folks. You, you start off, right, you can buy a call or maybe you buy a put. That's like step number one of understanding options, the simplicity of buying a call, selling a put. Then you maybe get into two-leg trades. Maybe you're the one paying. Then you begin, you can be the one selling premium, right? And we're talking about, Kevin... Boy, if you start for myself, when I start seeing implied moves of 10 to 15 percent on an equity, it's really hard to be the one paying the premium looking for that type of move. So maybe my, my mind starts to shift to being the one to selling the premium. And then I was talking about just like this. I want an example of a low volatility trade, maybe like Pepsi. And when I said that, I said, maybe that's the play, though. Maybe you're the one selling volatility at only a two and a half percent move sometimes. But guess what? On a stock that's not going to move a lot and you don't have a ton of risk, as opposed to the ones 
selling premium on a company like, well, Chipotle, which is moving a hundred dollars overnight, et cetera. Uh, I just, it was an awesome example, man. I was out there preaching your knowledge. We appreciate it every day, Kevin. And we look forward to the program at 12 noon Eastern time today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time. You don't get the experience, folks. Sitting in as a specialist with those equities, living it day in, day out, seeing it. Uh, a great program, the way they break down hypothetical trades. I've learned a tremendous amount 12 noon eastern time check it out they're going to be talking uber they're going to be talking disney and they're going to be talking pepsi we jump over to uber and disney they're both out with numbers after the bell tonight the thinkorswim platform folks you're talking about on uber a five dollar move on a 38 dollar stock that's a hefty move indeed you jump over to disney shares and you're talking about a decent move for Disney as well. There's a lot of volatility in play for Disney. You see the action that Netflix had on their earnings. Um, a little bit of paired expectations potentially for Disney, but they also have a lot going on here with the parks uh, business. Where is that right now in relation to where it was prior to the pandemic? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps right now up 42 points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 178. The Dow trading up 239 points. That is about two thirds percent. The Russell up about nine tenths percent. We jump over to crude. We get the crude contract up 38 cents right now, trading at 89.74. Uh, we were just under 89 bucks. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Teddy Kegstat from Forex Dash Trading Dash Unlocked. He's coming up next after the next break at about 42 past. We jump over to gold. Gold, 1828. We were up to 1833 earlier this morning. We jumped to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price right now and lower yield. You're talking about the 10-year up five ticks on the session right now. You're talking about a yield on that 10-year of, uh, excuse me, of, yeah, and I apologize. I got a little bit of technical difficulties this morning. I was trying to restart my router, et cetera. It just wasn't happening for some reason. 1.934%. 1.934%, the yield on that tenure. All right, I'm going to jump over to a story I saw this morning. Uh, and we'll start it off with, give me one moment, because that is not, yes, this is what I want to look at here. Yes. Uh, so this is a story of Cocoa Melon. And it's a story of content, man, and it's pretty remarkable. So Kevin Meyer, he was the former uh, executive at Disney. He took the role to manage ByteDance, which is, was in charge of TikTok. That whole mess developed where then Trump was going after TikTok. They were going to get banned. Probably not the position Kevin Meyer saw himself in. He ended up leaving that company. He now runs a content company with one other person. I'll get their name in here um, with Blackstone on top of it. Now, what's interesting here is so they have acquired Little Angel. It's a network of kids focused YouTube channels generate about 1.5 billion views a month. OK, deals not disclosed. Uh, first acquisition since it was acquired by Candle Media. So there's the company that the two former Disney executives run. And that's talking about Kevin Meyer. And let me get the other name of who's there. Tom Staggs. OK, um, it's a Blackstone bot backed firm. Now, they are ramping things up, man, and I think it's a great business plan because as I jump through it, uh, for those out there, you know, I've been a, a Disney bull, and Kevin Meyer, he was on Bloomberg uh, within the last couple weeks and did a great interview, and one of the things he was talking about, and many people said it, that there's going to be the opportunity for basically, you know, maybe four giant streaming companies out there, maybe five. You can't have 10 because they all can't have everybody, right? You can't have 10 Netflixes because there's not enough space for 10 Netflixes. Um, there's space for four Netflixes potentially, you know, as in every household may want to get Netflix. They, they may want to get uh, Disney. They may want to have access. I uh, so apologize. Hopefully you guys can hear me there. Give me one second as I restart my chart. Uh, they're going to have Disney. We're all probably going to have Amazon Prime. So you have Amazon content in there. Well, maybe HBO sneaks into the fourth slot there. Let me get my camera. Appreciate the patience. Hopefully I'm back up. Uh, but then what he went on to say, and this is where the private angle of things, smaller companies, then you're going to have niche, niche sectors, okay? And they're like scooping up everything in that sector, folks. Now, Coco Melon, as somebody with two young kids in the household, it's pretty amazing. Coco Melon in particular, okay? Uh, now, this article is from November of 2021 when their firm per first purchased Coco Melon. OK, now they've come and they've purchased a second company, which is the one that broke today, the news. Uh, and this one is Little Angel. So I pulled up Little Angel, uh, very similar graphically to Coco Melon. And you see it, the bright colors, the big eyes, they're singing, they're dancing, etc. for kids, folks. And, you know, screen time for children is something that you really want to limit. In general, okay, I believe the American Academy of Pediatrics says from zero to five years old, one hour of screen time a day. Many kids, especially as you get closer to five years old, probably way above one hour a day. Uh, but Coco Melon loved by my son, just turned one, but even before he was one, you have, you love you have kids under the age of one that love a show, and then you have a kid that's about to be five that loves a show, and it's educational. They're singing songs. They're talking about alphabets. They're talking about colors. They're talking about this is even one episode that they go into uh, trying to differentiate the difference of when you say excuse me to when you say sorry. Little subtleties that children need to pick up. Uh, there's a lot worse programs. Now, 
I despise some of the programs on YouTube that my almost five-year-old now watches because they're kids that are up to no good. It's like the attack squad, right? And these kids are up there. They're creating, you know, they're running around with, you know, their play guns and they're shooting people and they're attacking. I don't think that fosters good things. This actually is probably the best use of screen time for somebody that young. Now, it is remarkable when you think about, folks, uh, the type of money we're talking about here. So they scoop up little angels, okay? Coco Melon already. And I'm jumping around to two articles. This one is the point when they purchased Coco Melon for $3 billion, okay? Coco Melon. Now, I watch it on Netflix. It is regularly, and I think they put it in here. No, they're going to talk about it in here. Regularly in the top 10 on Netflix. It's going to be in this article. Uh, the point being, these are two bright people. They ran Disney. They're now scooping up all of these niche entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. The Coco Melon channel on YouTube's channel is the number two among all channels on the platform with approximately 120 million global sub subscribers. Uh, Moonbug programming appears in 27 languages on more than 100 platforms. They sell it to Netflix. I believe they also have Blippi in there that they sell to Hulu. Um, screen, please. Yeah, I think I just refreshed it. Z. Let me make sure. I'll get it up there for you. Hopefully that brings it up. Uh Keep your eye on this company and this business plan, folks, because they're scooping up any type of content creators on YouTube. You see just in a simple search, Little Angel, you're talking about, what do they got? Little Angel, 26.5 million subscribers just on that channel alone. Uh, and you're talking about billions of dollars. And this is the next way to be a con content creator because you can't compete with Disney. So what are they doing? They're creating the content and then they're subbing it out. They're subbing it out to Disney. Netflix, right, as in they're, they're leasing that to uh, uh, the big players out there. I thought it was interesting, though. I'm telling you, folks, I live I live this show, Coco Melon. Um, little Tommy, it's by far his favorite. He had a Coco Melon cake on top of things. Um, so, you know, you're like the biggest streamer out there on Netflix and kids programming, folks. And this is one of the reasons why I am a bull on Disney. Now, they've faced some woes here, and it's a little dicey coming into earnings when you got Netflix disappointing. And rightfully so. Disney's got to up their ante on programming, man, because they don't have the steady stream that Netflix does in big ways. I got a few shows on Netflix I'm trying to catch up with right now. Haven't even watched the new episode, new season of Ozark. Uh, what else are we watching? There's a lot going on. Point is, Disney, there's nothing in the queue right now that I need to watch on Disney. There's nothing. Uh, but you get kids watching something, folks, they ain't canceling in any way. Um, Coco Melon, that company, if I, would, if I could invest in that company, I would in terms of Candle Media, Kevin Meyer, and, and I would do it in a big way. But, but uh, they're a private company. But keep your eye on it because that is how this is going to evolve. You're going to have the big players out there, and then you're going to have the Blackstone backed content creators that are run by Disney executives that are multi-billion dollar corporations in their own right and they're going to be producing content that then is going to be um, pushed out to Netflix, to Hulu, to etc. But boy, some of those brands staggering what you can do if you get all those kids watching. But that's the deal. Stay tuned folks. When we come back, we'll be talking a little Forex with our man Teddy Cakes. That We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Paper White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> My producer is trying to get Teddy on right now. A few technical difficulties at the office. The gremlins are in the wires this morning, folks, but that's all right. We'll get through it. We had some moves in these currency markets, man. You look at the move we had on those jobs numbers, right? You have the yen prior to that jobs number, about 115. We're trading 115.50 right now. You jump over uh, even the U.S. dollar Canada. You see the spike that's giving it back a little bit. We jump over to the pound U.S. dollar. You're talking about backing things up to last Friday. You see where where we were in terms of a little bit lower, basically right back to those levels. And we'll take a look at the euro US dollar because you'll really see the action there. Uh, and there's your acceleration on this Friday with the euro at 113. We're trading about 114 on that number. All right, a couple news articles to jump through, and I got to give it a little bit of a chuckle, man. Have you seen the headlines out about the $45 billion heist from the city couple? Man. Crypto, watch out. Uh, so it comes out that they have stole $4.5 billion. You got Heather Morgan uh, and Ilya Lichtenstein's world of TED Talk style speeches and music videos. Uh, this woman had a rap video in there as well. They were trying to launder $4.5 billion of stolen crypto um, and they couldn't quite get it done. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Bitfinex, the 2016 hack. 119,000 Bitcoin. She's 31. Her husband's 34. They were married in 2019, I guess. Got the heist done in 2016. Six years later, they get grabbed. Uh, my, my guess is they'll be for a little bit of time in the slammer. But, man, man what? Watch out for those cryptos, folks. It's a billion dollars. Each is facing the possibility of 20-year prison sentence. And so they have to the judge, but the judge granted both bail, setting a bond of $3 million and asking her parents to put security uh, for the other gentleman, for the gentleman, $5 million. The government initially asked him not to be released. Yeah, I don't blame him. Um, oh, no. So they got an overnight request to hold a couple in jail ahead of their trial. The defendants are sophisticated cyber launderers who present a serious risk of flight. I don't blame them. You're talking about... Uh, uh, and I, I apologize for the protection. Tried to reboot it this morning and everything, but unfortunately, it just, just was not happening. I saw it just click off here. Logging back in. Oh, what a bummer. Come on. There we go. Okay. One, one second while I get. Okay. And in the room, give me one moment while I get my charts back up for the people in the dead end for my producer. Uh, 
Anyway, that was the point. Buyer beware. Yeah, so they're back in. Several other virtual currency addresses hold about 7,500 Bitcoin, valued at 328 million. Yeah, I would guess that they might not have been able to launder the $4.6 billion, but in the world of crypto, boy, they may have some. They may have some uh, crypto stowed away, and I would guess they do. They would, and uh, I would guess they are a severe flight risk for sure. Um, Wow, the crypto was worth seventy one million when they took it in twenty sixteen and uh it rose to four point five billion uh three point six billion worth of the tokens have been we're talking about nine hundred million, they're out there floating around. All you need is a good five or ten million to be on the run forever almost. Uh just a sensational story in the world of crypto. They don't stop. Okay, what else we got? Let's jump down the line. We got young brands, Taco Bell Parent, misses earnings estimates as higher costs. Way on profits. Uh, we jump over to Yum. Yeah, I apologize. Just couldn't get the, the connection today. I was restarting the routers, doing everything I could. And it just wasn't happening, unfortunately. And it's still not happening, I think. Maybe my producer can let me know if you can even hear me, because I can go over things at least. Uh, but my chart's not quite keeping up, even though they say they may. There we go. So we got Young Brands. They're up about 3.4% on their numbers. I mentioned Chipotle to Kevin Hicks. You're up $113 on Chipotle, folks. Strong numbers for Chipotle. You trade up to 1575 Uh Yeah, and this is why when you start talking about expected moves, right, I think the move was about $160, $140. It was about a 10% move priced into this equity. You got, you got an 8% move. If you were just playing volatility, you would have lost money. You would have had to play directional volatility on top of it. Chipotle, let's see how Lyft is trading on top of their earnings, giving it back a bit down about 4%. We talked about Uber and, and Disney with their earnings. So Uber, flat, they are probably have negative action with Lyft. And then they got positive action with the market. You got the S&Ps now accelerating. You're up more than 1% right now. We jump over to Disney shares. They got their earnings tonight up 1.3% ahead of their numbers for Disney shares. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon's up more than a percent. Microsoft is up 1.9% right now. There's an acceleration for you. Uh, Apple shares up four tenths percent right now let's check out some of the travel stocks boeing's been catching quite a bit lately boeing up another percent to 215 airbnb i like to keep my eye on strong growth stock there you go up another 2.7 percent look at that look at that wow uh moving pretty dramatically we jump over to some of the airlines boy they're trading higher with the market as well delta look at this surge folks just some from friday from 39 to 41 we jump over united shares yeah up 2.6 percent right now let's see how some of the banks are trading with rates higher jp morgan up about four tenths percent right now we got city right now trading at 67.47 and we got uh, unfortunately our man teddy kegstack couldn't make it on some technical difficulties maybe they're going around the net right now but for those looking for a little oil take he says oil's in a short profit taking move uh and the u.s dollar yen is poised to break out to the upside with a 116.20 upside target teddy we appreciate it man i'm dealing with a few technical difficulties myself uh and let's jump over real quick to that u.s dollar yen since we're talking it uh we jump over to fx we jump over to the u.s dollar yen we're trading right now at 115.47 when we talked to teddy last week Right, you're trading at 114 20, 15 47. Yeah, more than a point rise there. Uh, so 116 20 is the upside that Teddy's looking for for that US dollar yen. Let's put it back on a daily to see that on the chart. Yeah, coming up to the highs we had maybe on January 4th and jumping over to that crude contract real quick. Crude, a little bit of a pullback. But man, you got to keep things in context, folks. It can't go up forever every single day. Uh, even a pullback from 93 to 89. That is a trend that is intact, folks. <laughs> Has not broken lower just yet. So we'll see where crew goes. Sitting at 90 bucks right now for that crew contract, 89.64 to be exact. All right, back to the markets. And we got the S&Ps up 50 points, NASDAQ up 150, Russell catching a bit up 26 points right now. Let's see how gold's trading this morning. Gold contract up two bucks at 18.29. All right, what other headlines do I have up here? Let's check it out what I want to cover. We've covered the cocoa melon. We've covered inflation. Uh, we covered the crypto scams going on. This is a sensational one. We'll tease this one as we come into the break. I don't think we'll have uh, all the ability to go over it. Credit Suisse, a coke smuggling wrestler, and stashes of 
cash. Credit Suisse, man. The headlines at that bank. Watch out. Some tantalizing details as a historic trial targets, uh, targets alleged failure to screen illicit funds. The bank denies the charges, which it has noted with, quote unquote, astonishment. Well, folks, you're going to hear some of the tidbits of what they're talking about and the type of cash they were dealing with. And uh, let's just say they got a lot of cash and they got very little answers of what that cash came from. And they're supposed to do some due diligence and they did not. So we'll talk a little bit about Credit Suisse when we get back in their affinity. It's their symbol now. Yeah, Credit Suisse trading at 10 bucks and change right now. Uh, far cry from where it had been, 1495 about a year ago. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back. Unfortunately, I'm really struggling with my connection here. Hopefully, you can hear me through this last segment. I'll probably post my chart one final time, but man, the tantalizing details. So you're talking about, folks, the real part that you need to understand about this in terms of the bankers here. Uh, Swiss pro prosecutors can press criminal charges against banks if they believe those institutions did not do enough to screen clients in their cash for obvious ties to illicit activity. You had a manager there that was accepting deposits of used bank notes that regular, regularly exceed exceeded $565,000. So you're taking cash deposits of half a million dollars on the regular without wondering where it's coming from. And you're 
thinking that that's due diligence, not even close. Uh, the, they allege strong indications as to the criminal origin of the funds. And guess what? They were cocaine balls everywhere. Uh, the first time that uh, this that Credit Suisse is going to face criminal charges. That's the uh, it's the first time the Swiss bank faces a criminal trial in Switzerland. So of all the problems they got going on, there's new ones. And uh, yeah, the case dates to 2008. Prosecutors open a probe into the Bulgarian wrestler whose training funding had dried up after the collapse of the Iron Curtain. Man, they got to make a movie about this one, man. Watch out for that. Uh, what is interesting here is the statute of limitations for money laundering. Only seven years or 15 years for aggravated money laundering. The bank's court lawyers are expected to challenge the right of prosecutors to include evidence before 2007. Bottom line is you do the math. Not surprising. You got a Swiss bank out there and they are taking cash deposits of a half million dollars plus and saying, how were we supposed to know there was anything going on? Boy, it's pretty amazing the world we live in. All right. Speaking of amazing, how about this market, folks? S&P's up 48 points. NASDAQ 100 up 151. We got Uber earnings. We got Disney earnings. We got a lot going on. We got a CPI data number tomorrow. Where's the market going to position itself as it waits for that? I appreciate you joining me this morning, folks. I apologize for a little bit of the technical difficulties. We'll get it fixed before tomorrow, but stay tuned because you got a treat. You got your man Basil Chapman coming up at 10 o'clock. We have our man Larry live at 11. We have Fast Market at 12. Remember, they're going to be talking Uber. They're going to be talking Disney. They're going to be talking PepsiCo, where Kevin Hinks, our man, was a specialist for many years back there as well. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.